Namaskar. This is Rohit Roy. Firstly, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to talk about chaos and the chaos which I have faced in my life and how every day I try to convert that chaos into constructive chaos. What springs to mind when we use the word chaos? Something which is an upheaval, something that disrupts our life. Chaos basically means something that is random and unpredictable. Let me ask you a question. All the greatest thinkers, all the greatest planners, business people, scientists, did they ever prepare for a day like March 2020 that the entire world together came under a lockdown? I don't think anybody could have foreseen this event. This is true chaos. Now, what I'm going to talk to you about, what I'm going to share about my own life is uh, stuff of how you can make a chaotic situation constructive for yourself, which actually defines the rest of your life. I'm going to go back a little bit into my past. The very first time which I was struck by chaos and I understood the meaning of it, really. I was hardly 15 years old. I had just uh, given my exams of my 10th standard, scored really, really happy, very, very um, happy with the outcome because I've always been a grade A student. I used to rank first or max second in class and I was very proud of it. My mother was a teacher and uh, um, I was always happy with my grades. And then, uh, bam, I lost my father. Now something like this in a young boy's life can be and is the most chaotic phase because suddenly your world comes to a standstill. It was like somebody had uh, swept the carpet from under our feet and we didn't know whether we were coming or going. My mother was a homemaker, my father was a provider, which was normal in those days. And uh, we didn't know where our next meal was coming from. When I first saw my father's body, I still remember the, the, the feeling and the thought wasn't that, oh God, I lost my dad. I was very, very close to my dad. My first thought was, who's going to pay for my education? Where are we going to live? How are we going to eat? Reality strikes you immediately when you lose someone who's your provider, your leader, your hero. That happened to me. Unfortunately, I was very, very young and I couldn't handle that chaos in my life. And from being a grade A student, I slipped down to barely passing my 12th standard board with 35% mark. And that too being given grace in one subject, biology, which incidentally was my favorite subject. This is what uh, the chaos did to me. I was very young uh, and impressionable and innocent and I didn't know how to handle this. My mother, who was a teacher, had never stepped out of the house. And uh, now she had to fend for two young kids uh, with no knowledge of her husband's business. This chaos brought us together as a family. I remember my next year was terrible when it came to academics. Obviously, uh, in those days, parents were really, you know, um, looking after the kids in such a way that they would mollycoddle them, they would protect them, which we do now also. But parents se zada, jo teachers the hamare, they were really parents away from home. They really treated me with kid gloves. They wanted to soften the blow. They knew what was happening in my uh, house and family. But sometimes I wish that those teachers, one of them had taken me, taken, held my collar and shook me out of that reverie and said, listen, Rohit, what's done is done. It's time for you to move on and face the reality. Nobody did that because they were sympathetic. You know, they wanted to make my life easier. But what happened is that in, in attempting to soften the blow, I became very soft. I slid from number one to the last in my class. Uh, after this, I realized that I had to take care and I had to grow up immediately. I had to use the, the chaos and try and make something out of it because my dad wasn't coming back, right? Uh, the worst thing that could happen happened to me. I stood really, I scored very badly in my 12th uh, board exams. I obviously couldn't get into the college of my choice and you know how, how it, big it is. And uh, I still applied to the college and fortunately in those days, everything was not as cut and dried as today. They took into consideration my 11 years of consistent performance, consistently performing at the academic level. And uh, they showed me some grace and I got admission into St. Xavier's College, Ahmedabad, which was one of the most premier colleges uh, in the state and the city and continues to be so. 
Anyway, I got there and that's when I got hold of my life all over again. I started from the bottom and I, you know, I also wanted to enjoy my college life, bunk lectures and go have coffee in the canteen. I did a little bit of that, but what I focused was on myself. I came back from the dumps literally and uh, I stood 27th overall in my university. In physics and math, I uh, graduated in physics with math as a subsidiary. And again, finally, my life was whole because I was a really good student. And for me not to score, um, you know, uh, every exam used to be a big blow to my confidence. And uh, finally, my mother was happy. Everybody was happy. And I was back. I did what all students at that time were doing. I applied to my favorite colleges in the United States of America. I wanted to go there and do my business. Uh, so I applied to two of them actually. One was my uh, college of choice, which was uh, which is one of the best business colleges in the world even today. It's called the Ivy League of uh, Business Colleges. It's called uh, it's in University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. And uh, the other one was uh, another college which was a safety net college, as you all understand. And uh, of course, I got into Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I was all gung ho. I really aced my GMAT exams. I scored really high D on my SAT. I got my I-20. Everything was set. And finally, the chaos was behind me. I had beaten it. I go to the US consulate. I stand outside for five hours in the line to get in to get my visa, my student visa. My docket number is called. I go into the console. In less than 30 seconds, they stamp my passport saying not approved. And yet again, my life comes crashing down. And this time the blow was telling because I had no plan B. I've never had a plan B. I've always wondered what it would be if I had a plan B at that time. Uh, my life would have been different for sure. I wouldn't have been an actor for sure. And anyway, so this happened to me and again, Chaos reigns supreme. Now this time I had no opportunity to sit back and wallow in self-pity because I couldn't blame anybody. I had done everything right, but the situation was random and unpredictable and I didn't get my visa. I did the next best thing which was possible. I sat and studied for all the Indian colleges. I gave my IIM exams. I gave an exam for SP Jain, which was a very stellar institute, uh, Symbiosis Pune. I aced most of them. I flunked IIM because I was overconfident and arrogant that, you know, if I can get into Ann Arbor and Michigan, I can get in everywhere. And I, 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 I you know, that's another thing you should take care of. Uh, in that chaos, I focused my mind, sat for all the exams and I said, okay, now since I couldn't go there, I'm going to sit here and finish my education. The day, okay, so I also passed the written exams at Symbiosis Pune. The day I was supposed to go for my final group discussion, which in those days were most of a formality, I think. I was sitting in Kunal Kapoor's office, Kunal Kapoor, uh, the son of the legendary Shashi Kapoor. And I was sitting there and I'd gone with my brother to meet him. And he says, so what do you do, young man? I said, you know, I'm studying and I'm uh, going for my group discussions to Pune. I'm going to be studying my MBA. He says, oh. So you mean two more years in college? I said, yes, two more years in college. And what are you going to do after that? Sit in some AC office and write some checks and uh, sign some papers. Is that the life you really want? And I looked at him and I thought in my head, yeah, that's the life I really want. I've gone through a lot of strife. Uh, now I'm responsible for my family. I need a comfortable, secure job and I'm good at what I do. So that's what I want. But here destiny comes into play. That chaos which is uh, running in your mind is also making you take decisions which could be momentous. Here is where you need to keep your eyes and mind open. My answer should have been, yes, of course, this is what I want to do. But instead, I looked at him, thought for some time and said, why is this question being asked of me? I have no experience in advertising. I have no experience whatsoever. I didn't even know what a beta tape meant or what a showreel was. And I looked at him and I said, okay, no, there's something right about this man. I said, okay, Kunal, I'll work for you with zero experience. He said, okay, join, start now. That is probably the only time my mother was uh, very, very upset with me. She said, such a big decision of your life you took on your own without consulting us. And I said, mom, I don't know why, but I feel that something is drawing me towards this direction. But I'll, I couldn't go to symbiosis. I lost that seat, unfortunately, and uh, it 
remains a slight regret of my life even today that I couldn't finish my MBA. And I started working in advertising. This is the second time I beat uh, chaos. This chaos actually ended up changing my life forever. Today, I sit in front of students like you. I go around the world talking. You know, I've never talked about my uh, story till now. I've never discussed my failures because, you know, I always feel this rags to riches story is done to death. And I don't want anybody's sympathy. But today was an opportunity to talk about how many times I failed and how many times chaos has stuck. But you have to dig deep in, remove something which is constructive and make that chaos the defining moment of your life. This one decision changed my life forever. Yes, I was probably going to be a very successful marketing man or a management man. But here I am struggling to be a successful actor even after 25 years. But it makes me so happy. It gives me great joy to uh, play different characters every day. I actually get paid for what I enjoy doing. And this would not have happened had that chaos not got me thinking of everything just other than what I was thinking about. It gave me this perspective which I never had before. I had never taken risks, you know. Also, a lot of teachers listening to me, I'm very, very sorry when I say this, but I disagree that you should always have a plan B. No, sometimes not having a plan B really, really works. Like I didn't have a plan B, so I focused completely on what I was getting into. That was the moment which held me in good stead and continues to do so till date. Accidentally, I joined the industry. People saw me at shootings. People said, why don't you yourself model or act? And I used to laugh. I said, <laughs> I don't know A of acting, nor have I ever modeled or faced the camera. And they said, you know, that's, that's what it means being a fresher. Let's give it a shot. So I started modeling. I started acting. Suddenly I got acting offers and uh, Shashi Kapoor himself auditioned me and told Kunal that, you know, this boy who works for you, has got uh, a certain amount of charm and grace and I think he's going to make it as an actor. And that's when I started my journey as an actor. I've always been an accidental actor, but it's the chaos of my life which really uh, kind of di diverted me. A lot of you um, will probably be told by your parents uh, and your teachers and uh, your friends and well-wishers that must uh, prepare for the rainy day, you must prepare uh, plan B. Believe me, don't. Don't. I have seen it in my life. I never give gyan. I only share what I've been through. Focus on plan A till that plan becomes successful and it will. You have to know what you're good at, of course. I mean, you know, I can't think oh, I want to become an Indian cricketer with no talent. You have to know what your talents lie, where your talents lie, where you can put in that hard work, which will transform into success. And success is something which might be elusive, but it's a definite possibility. It will happen. If not today, then tomorrow and take my word for it. It will happen. After 25 years in the industry, here I am talking to you about my journey. And I'm sure more than 50, 60, 70 percent of you sitting there will be talking about your journey with your youngsters and your followers uh, when you've reached my stage. It is an amazing feeling to share uh, the chaos that I've been through and I continue doing so. It still continues. The chaos will never stop. The moral of the story is never give up. Dig deep. Dig into the resources of your mind, your body, your soul. Come out with the answer to that chaos. Everybody who can fight that chaos is always going to win. Even today, these times are probably the worst I have seen in my life on the whole. Maybe not my career. Of course, my career has been going well for the last five, six years. But the world is going through. This kind of strife has never been seen by the entire world as a whole. But we will come out of it because there is method in the madness, because there are certain people who will guide us out of this chaos. And uh, let's all be that certain people in our own lives because the change always starts with you. I wish you all the very best. I wish I had more time to talk to you and I could see you in person and uh, also feel your questions. But who knows, very shortly, I will come to your college and talk to you more about myself, about yourself. And I always do these chats because I love to gain insight from people like yourselves who are starting off because that helps me stay younger 
and relevant. All the very best. God bless. Have fantastic lives ahead.